This is Cam Wyland, and you're listening to the 64th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. I've been spending quite a bit of time this week in a hypothetical artillery shell crater in my work in progress is setting in the Battle of the Somme in World War I. It's always rewarding to get to put all my months of research to work in the mad dash of an actual battle scene. Fitting historical details into the lives of my characters, who always have their own opinions about the direction any given scene should take, can be both difficult and exciting. I'm also preparing a blog tour for my upcoming CD, Conquering Writer's Block and Summoning Inspiration. So far, the tour features lots of extra tips and expanded suggestions for, you guessed it, fostering creativity and inspiration. It's going to be a blast, so be sure to check back throughout the next couple months for further details. Why Narrative Isn't a Bad Thing The latest post in the video series on my blog uses Anne Brashear's fantasy, My Name is Memory, to explain how to effectively utilize narrative. You can watch the video on my blog at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d dot blogspot dot com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. Meanwhile, enjoy this week's podcast. Is your story mysterious enough? The art of the mysterious is at the heart of every type of story, not just mysteries and suspense. The last time you were flipping pages into the wee hours of the morning, what was it that transformed your normally practical, serene self into an obsessive, page-turning maniac? I'm willing to bet this month's royalties that it was something mysterious. The writer of that book was teasing you with the inaccessibility of crucial information. In short, you had fallen under the spell of that burning question, what's going to happen next? In the anthology Naming the World, editor Brett Anthony Johnston sums up successful writing in one sentence. When your readers want something, do not give it to them. Deciding what to tell our readers and what not to tell them can be tricky business. The specifics of the mysteries in every story will differ according to each story's demands, but following are some general guidelines on what information an author can and can't safely withhold. Good mysteries include anything your main character needs to know. For the most part, the reader and the protagonist should be in the same boat. If the protagonist wants to know the same thing the reader does, the reader will feel as if he and the character are in this adventure together. Natural Plot Progressions Let your mysteries flow naturally from the plot. Fiction mirrors life in the fact that none of us are ever quite sure what's going to happen from moment to moment. If the main character is hanging on the edge of a cliff, with an avalanche about to fall on his head, readers are going to be frantic to know how he gets out of the mess. Secrets in the Past One of my personal favorite types of mystery, guaranteed to keep me reading chapter after chapter, is found in the tangled backstories of protagonists and antagonists alike. This is one area where authors can often cheat by withholding information, especially if the point of view character has a good reason for having forgotten and or trying to forget the information. Bad mysteries include basic need-to-know information. Don't think that withholding such elementary info as a character's name, gender, or general goal will make readers want to keep reading past the first chapter. In general, they'll just be confused and frustrated. We have to tell them enough to let them understand what's going on. Common Knowledge Among Characters If the main character and his cronies are all in the know about this mysterious Bill person, and if they refer to him frequently without so much as an explanation to the poor benighted reader, the reader will probably feel like someone excluded from an in-joke. If the protagonist knows something he's not sharing with the reader, it better be for a good reason, or the reader could end up feeling manipulated, and probably annoyed. Plot Holes and Plausibility Gaps A character who shows up in Chapter 5, with the previously unheard of ability to leap tall buildings and stop speeding trains, needs an explanation. Unless you have a good reason, and proper pacing and foreshadowing to support it, 
for not explaining this sudden turn of events. The only thing you're likely to accomplish with such a mystery is a major destruction of your reader's suspension of disbelief. Optimally, every moment of the story should present or further an element of mystery. If your reader ever looks up and realizes he has no question marks dangling over his head, he really has no reason to keep reading. Artfully and wisely permeating your book with a sense of the mysterious is a vital factor in creating a story worth reading. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's W-E-I-L-A-N-D, dot blogspot.com, and be sure to listen again next week.